That's Nick. And that's Joseph, and today we are here to talk about <laughs> Amulet, the directorial debut of... We're act- cursed, okay. <laughs> All them witches. Uh, the directorial debut of uh, actress Ramla Garay, uh, which will be released... In- it's planned to be released in some theaters. We'll see how that goes. And on digital and demand, uh, July 24th, 2020, uh, courtesy of Magnet Releasing, it premiered at the 2020 Sundance Film Festival. The more I thought about this film, the more I really liked it. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. What would you... I thought... It, what did I say? Like a like a dreadful drama? Yeah. Yeah, it's very... Uh, it's not really a horror film or a psychological thriller. It's, it's cinema of dread. Yeah. I would feel... It was effective. Yeah. Okay, the story is about a man named Tomas, mm-hmm. who is a soldier in a foreign country, and uh, he is working like at an outpost, sort of like securing the border from people attempting to cross illegally. Mm-hmm. And he uh, decides to leave, becomes a refugee in the UK, where he finds work in a home via some nun like assisting a woman who's helping her sick mother. Right? That's like the basic story. That's the basic story. How yeah. he gets there is a little more creepy. Well, yeah, we can break it down. Okay, all right. Um, I didn't know if you had other things to say before that. Oh, no. Get him out of the way now. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> what are you, are you just synopsize? It's fine. Okay, so Tomas, um, while he's at the outpost, he um, is like, all of a sudden starts digging a hole. Mm-hmm and finds this amulet mm-hmm. which looks like a woman with like a sea, like a clamshell head it looks like a booby yeah booby doll with a half clamshell head um he captures a woman who's attempting to run mm-hmm. and brings her back to his outpost and he tells her like look girl if you try to cross that border they're going to take you out so you're welcome to stay here i'm not gonna like do anything to you um and there's some new like law that might pass or something so maybe in a month you could just safely walk through the border so why don't you just wait so it appears that she's okay with that and she stays with him for a little bit Mm -hmm. um then we see him sort of carrying her away somewhere yeah yeah then we cut to him in like a like like a it's like a refugee like a refugee camp, camp homeless shelter almost in the UK where he's like strapped to a bed no he's not he's he's tying his own hands oh he's tying his hands yeah. he's having like nightmares or about what happened he's from this unknown war torn country where everybody speaks English uh, but the house catches on fire mm-hmm. so he ends up without a place to stay so he goes to like a church or a convent he wakes up and. A, the nun finds him, mm-hmm. that's right. And she offers him assistance mm-hmm. and says, like, you can go work for this lady and help her sick, her and her sick mom. Mm-hmm. So he goes. It's very awkward because the young woman seems like she has no social graces and doesn't appear to even want him there. Um, but he goes for a little while before he, like, there's some tension. He ends up seeing the mother. Mm, yep who is like she's more than sick uh-huh she looks like she, she's walking kinda, dead kind of like that aunt and overlord that is... or i thought she's like uh <laughs> deborah logan the t- yeah taking of deborah logan the, yeah, yeah she looks fucked up so he goes back so he's obviously distressed he doesn't want to do it he goes back to the nun the nun says like well hey you know all you got to do is say the good word and you go back to where the hell you came from mm-hmm. so he's like well let me go back and try to help while he's there, he notices a lot of weird things. Like, there's something weird about the water. Mm-hmm. There's a scene where he tries to, like, fix the toilet, and it overflows, and, like, like a albino bat is stuck in it that ends up biting him. Yeah. That was a creepy that scene. That creepy, yeah. Um, ultimately, he finds out that what's happening in this house is, because he witnesses, like, some sort of creature attempting to, like, evacuate the mom's body which is the same i think it's a bit the, another one of those bats. it looks like that creature um the nun explains to him that there are demons mm-hmm. and this particular demon like the only way that we can kind of keep them under control is to give them like a host and sort of like you know watch it <laughs> watch over it provide for it and make sure it doesn't go anywhere mm-hmm. so um that's what that situation is and you're going to be the new one mm-hmm. you're going to be the new host watcher mm-hmm. So he agrees because he has no choice. Well, he's going to be the new host. 
he's gonna be the host, so he just succumbs to it. But she says, well, now that you're gonna be the new host, you need to pick a keeper, mm -hmm. you know? And he says, well, I want the lady, because he's kind of fallen. He's fallen, Magda is her name, he's fallen in love with Magda. Magda, mm -hmm. who's the woman who's taking care of her mother. Um, and the nun, her name is what? I forgot. Sister, Sister Claire. Claire. Played by Melda Staunton. Mm -hmm. So Sister Claire says, um, well, you can't have her, but he insists, and he, Sister Claire says, well... She's taken already, but if you go take care of the situation... You know what to do, so basically that means you need to go and kill the mom, and you can have uh, Magda. So he, so Tomas goes and kills the mom, and after he's done killing her, he, like her robe, or he opens her robe, and sees that the mom has a penis. Mm -hmm. So then there's sort of a montage explaining that that is a man and that the man is a man who was suspected or convicted of killing like his five or six children, his, killing his family and then attempting to marry his stepdaughter or something. So he's like an awful human being. Mm -hmm. uh, something else just kind of dawned on me about it because he was it. it, it posits that he's the homeowner of that In house. the beginning of the film, uh, or when he's first, when Tomas is first introduced to Magna, she makes a comment about like, this is not their house, some guy gave it to them. Mm -hmm. And then also in the house, because Magda and Tomas go on a date, mm -hmm. and he needs like nice clothes, so Magda brings him like a nice shirt, and she says, oh, there are a lot of things in this house that don't belong to mm -hmm. us. So, um, he, uh, and then we learn that through, cause, so throughout the film, there are flashbacks to Tomas at his outpost protecting the border, and we get to learn more about his relationship with that woman, and we find out that she does decide to leave. Like She's like, I'm not waiting for the borders to open. I need to go cross because my daughter's over there. Mm -hmm. She runs. Tomas chases her, and he assaults her. And we don't know how because we don't see it. We can hear it. it and the assumption like is like rape. he sexually assaulted yeah. her. So, so he's also a creep. Which... Is, what, <laughs> I, I think this, okay. We also okay. learn, because the amulet, he ends up, like, there's a room in this house that has sort of like a life-size version of the, mm -hmm. the amulet, and he enters it in a very sort of like, it looks like a birth canal. Like mm -hmm. It's very vaginal. Mm -hmm. He enters it, and then the actual amulet, which is probably the corniest part of the movie to me. Sure. The amulet is like talking to him in the voice of Mag... Carla Jury's voice, Magda. Magda telling him like all these things and uh, the end. So now he's been infected with this demon. She said you'll be a great mother. Yeah. So now he's infected with the demon. Uh -huh. So the final scene of the film is Magda uh, is driving and she stops at a gas station and the person working at the gas station is the woman who Tomas assaulted. Mm -hmm. Miriam. Miriam. And Magda's like looking for food. She picks up something, and then Ragu. yeah, Miriam says like, "Ooh, that is not good. I wouldn't feed that to a dog or something." And Magda's like, "Oh, then it's perfect." She buys it, and then she gives Miriam the amulet. Mm -hmm. And then Magda drives off with Tomas in the back seat, eating his uh, ragu. The end. Okay, so. The symbolism, the like the story and the symbolism is what really worked for me. Yeah, because I read so much into it. The more I talked about it. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a there's a lot of there's a lot of subtlety uh, in what's going on here that you you really do have to tease apart. Because it just occurred to me that he's given two opportunities by the nun who actually who ends up not being a nun. Right. Uh, who's the, why don't you go back where you came from? And he doesn't want to go back because of this atrocity he's running away from and that's really where they, they've gone back to they crossed back into his war-torn country previously war-torn country just like they got stuck in that guy's house where he committed you, you have to go back to um what, what's the word i'm looking for to deal with your indiscretion your, well your, it's more than indiscretions i mean but yeah you're evil yeah so I understood that the amulet is representative of this demon which is like a like has like a feminine how would you describe it? Yeah, that, I mean, there's there's all this. Uh, I think the demon represents like female like vengeance. Yeah, there's all this female. Well, there's all this half shell, seashell imagery, and you think of Venus in the half shell, uh, coming from the ocean, born from the mind of Zeus. Uh, I love the idea that this like female demon is torturing all these like dirtbag ass men. Mm -hmm. So I really liked that, and how because there's so much question, I so many questions I have like. 
I assume that he, so when we see Tomas just randomly digging a hole and finding the amulet, I assume that the amulet called for him because it knew that he had done wrong. Mm -hmm. And like you said, he's given multiple opportunities to, to not like get, well, to go back and deal with his demons, his own demons. So since he's not, like he could have reconciled him, he could have reconciled his own demons, but he didn't. This demon is reconciling for him. For him. Yeah, it, you know, very much reminded me of the Wicker Man, you know, wick, like Man of Straw is easy to burn. Um, Tone-wise, I think it's like um, the witch, kind of. Yeah. As far as like what people might expect versus what they get. Also that one movie where it's like post-apocalyptic and they're in that house um, that we... Never mind. Relic? No. We won't. You... Yeah. I, it, it, uh, we'll figure it out and I'll flash it up because I don't... Rem you won't be able to figure it out from what I'm saying. Oh, but it also, like, a feminist-inspired horror film, uh, Relic, which also played at the same Sundance Film Festival, reminds me, has that same slow oh, quality. Yes. Even Babadook, um, to a degree, uh, is a reference point, uh, I think. Also, that terrible Kevin Bacon movie we just watched, You Should Have Left. Yeah. <laughs> which is something somebody should This is should've... much better than that. Um, okay, so we're talking about what we liked about it. Uh -huh. uh, great cast that uh, Garay has assembled. You know, she's worked with a ton of great directors. Uh, she was first on my radar back in 2007. Uh, she starred in Francois Zone's uh, English language debut, Angel. She's a Woody Allen scoop. Um, uh, the lead is Tomas, played by uh, Alex Secarano. Uh, who was uh, one of the leads in Francis Lee's God's Own Country. Uh, in, in that movie, I felt he was kind of doomed with the queer relationship he was in in that as well. Uh, Angel Angeliki Papulia, who uh, uh, was in Yorgos Lanthimos' Dogtooth, the, the Lobster, is Miriam. Love her. Okay. Like, I think she's a... And she, they style her in a way to make her look a lot like Carla Jury's Magna. Magda. Uh, in college that's what you said I didn't see it but. I think the haircut the bra like I think there are some similarities there because they also set up that Miriam was a woman he'd seen around town like they have an exchange that says you know I used to see you waiting in line to print papers at the university and I stood there for an hour and you wouldn't look up and look at me like he, he's somebody that she had desire for so I, I think those are all things intricate things we're supposed to pick up yeah on. there's a lot of little things and a lot of um yeah, there's just a lot to talk about and read into. So those are the kind of films I do enjoy. Um, but again, it's not, I wouldn't call it, it's definitely not a horror film. It's its a slow burn. I uh, love the look, uh, lens by Laura Bellingham. Uh, the outs, the lot of shots of the creepy forest in, in the country he's from, I thought, you know, evoke an eeriness that is palpable. Um, the, I liked the score by Sarah. I, the, by Sarah Anglis, the singing. Uh, it is a little corny, I think, how it looks and how we see it in the end, but it also provides uh, some explanation for what's going on. And it, should, are you done talking about what you liked? Mm -hmm. I think that's what one of the faults well, of the you film. you have a couple minutes. I mean... <laughs> one of the faults of the film, I think, is it, we also should have explained the mythology a little more. Because uh, right away we know that Imelda Stanton's not good. She throws his money away, lies about finding his money to kind of trap him into going into this house. That's right. Um, and, yeah, I, I just think that we, we could have spent a little more time developing the character because we don't really know that much about Tomas. It does do a good job of making us feel bad for him, but... I could have stood more about Tomas, but I also kind of like that I didn't know a lot because it makes me think, like... He, because part of me thought after immediately watching it, I thought, oh, he doesn't really compare. Like what he did to this woman doesn't compare to the other guy having killed six people or five people, and then I'm assuming having molested his stepdaughter for years. You know, they don't compare the same. But then it's like maybe Tomas was like a serial rapist, and maybe he had stalked that woman and had done it before. Maybe the the sort of trauma he was experienced experiencing like the, the nightmares were related to other things bad things he had done you know i had pointed out it because another character makes a comment about the, all the books he's carrying around in his knapsack he's at one point he's reading hannah arendt's uh, something by hannah arendt and i went back and looked and i i think based on the print on the cover it looks like her essay called on violence which is all about how violence is the nexus between those who have power and those who want power and and the clashing of those two things is what causes violence hmm. Um, so I, I can't help but feel that that is something that 
Okay. And, and, and also another um, feminist existentialist philosopher kind of haunting the periphery of uh, what Gray is doing. Yeah. Yeah. What else would you say in your limited time here? What would you give this film? I think, uh, yeah, it's a film that stays with you. Um, in, if, even for its faults, even, even for things that I wish had played out a little differently or wanted more of, those are all good things, really. Uh, three and a half out of five, I think. It's an excellent debut. I would give it three and a half out of five as well. Okay. Anything else? No. All right, bye. Bye. Thank you.